Welcome to London's Craziest Gangster with me, Mr. Fish. Okay, keeping it in that Bible where all the rules of society are thrown, tossed, and washed away. Whose motto is if angels fly and devils die, how come I'm still alive? Ha! <laughs> Crash! Today I'd like to uh, give two shouts out and to two uh, people that uh, have met on the street and gave me a good heads up. And, and good comments, so I'd like to first mention Harry, who's Stretch's boy, and Stretch is doing a long sentence at the moment, so Harry, big up to you, thank you for what you said to me, and I'd also like to give a big shout out to Adam, uh, the Muslim from Goulburn Road, also known as Scarface, you my friend, gangster. Okay, so here we go, enjoy the show. Prison's a very funny thing, and you have to be very careful with prison, and one of the uh, funniest things about prison is, when you're um, an IPP or you go to court, you may have to do a pre-sentence report. And I, I, I'm going to tell you this case because I remember a guy called Liam Ditchfield who said that I was in his paperwork for grassing him and then he showed me not any proof. So I'm going to say this because this is what happened to me. You've got to understand, just because it's in your paperwork, just because it's documented, doesn't actually mean it's true, and so here we go. Enjoy the show. Easy on the mic, and mind how we go. So, uh, I remember one time uh, 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 I was in, um, I was, uh, they had to do a pre sentence report on me. And when you get an IPP of 99 years, they give you uh, what is called an oasis, and in this oasis. They um, they write down to you, they, they write everything about you and your crime and why you committed it and everything's in there. So anyway, as I'm um, as I'm going uh, looking through this report, I remember it was a bit that said you're high risk uh, to the public, and I was like why? But it wouldn't say why, and so. I thought, why? And so, I asked the probation officer who wrote this. I said, what's this? And it said, I, you know, you're high risk of the public. And she said, oh, someone's made an allegation against you. I can't tell you what the allegation is or who made it, but you're high risk to the public. Okay. So, uh... I said, yeah, but how can I, um, you know, defend myself? How can I, how can I, how do I know whether it's right or wrong? She said, you don't. So I was like, okay, no problem. Let's do it your way. And so I wrote to the probation service and I said to the probation, uh, I'd like to make an allegation against the probation officer. She came into the room, she touched my leg, and she asked me if I wanted to have sex. I said, but don't tell her, just put it in her file that she's high risk to the prisoners and high risk to the probation service. So anyway, the probation service wrote back to me and said, oh, look, we can't just put it in her file. We need to investigate it and evidence it and before we can go ahead. But I said, no, 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 no stop. That is what she has done to me. So it can't be one rule for you and one rule for me. So they said, oh, okay, we'll investigate the allegation against you as well. So anyway, you know, I'm waiting here now, and uh, they investigated the allegations, and they investigated where it came from. And it turns out the whole thing was nothing to do with me in the first place. And this is what I'm saying about documentation. You can't, just because it's in your paperwork, doesn't, people that write documentation make mistakes. And anyway, she was a senior probation officer, which is even worse. And she had to then write me a letter of apology and they had to apologize. And then she had to take the whole thing out of my, my file. But that could have got me and that made me stay for another five years. I got me involved. But you know, you have to understand sometimes, you've got to be quite smart, you understand so that these people could think, sometimes think they can do whatever they want and you're too stupid to, 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 to do it back. 
you know. So if I never made that sexual allegation against her, I would still maybe be high risk to the public on those allegations. And 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 you know, you know, you just have to be really careful, gentlemen, ladies. You know, if you get in trouble, read your paperwork properly, read the documentation properly, and if there's something in there you don't like, contest it. Don't be frightened. Yeah. Fear is not the fear is not in, in the fear is not the place here. Trust me, you need to contest it because you need to make sure whatever's in your file is right. And she apologised to me and they apologised. But look at all the effort I had to go through to do it. I had to make an allegation. There, you know, it, it's ridiculous. But that's what you have to do sometimes. Anyway, going back to Wandsworth now. I told you about uh, the officers, the Muslims, uh, I told you about the guy that was getting beaten and killed by the guy from Never Grove. And so, today, I'm going to tell you about... Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you about uh, prison itself. <sighs> when you go to prison, you have to make sure you can hold your hands up, okay? And so one of the things I always do, I always train. I train in the cell and I train on the yard. And I, we run do different circuits. And it's funny, whenever I go to prison, I never ever go to the gym for the first six, eight weeks. Always just train on the yard, get fit, get fit. And the reason I do this is because when you go to prison sometimes, what happens is, well, when you go to prison, they use the gym against you as a, you know, as a, as a like, um, if you don't do this, you won't get gym. If you don't do that, you won't get gym. So they use it against you as a tool to control you. And so I always, uh, I always make sure that I don't go, so they can see that I don't give a shit about gym. Yeah. But also what I do, being a boxing coach, I always, uh, like to get the flip flops because we're not allowed pads, and I like to give the boys something to do. I mean, you know, they're especially when they're young. You get these guys; they're in there, and uh, they uh, do. Um, you know, they got all this testosterone built up in them. They got no guidance or nothing, and they're going mad. And screws come to me and say, "Fish, this guy's going mad. Can you have a word with him and take him under your wing?" And um, crash out your father. I would then get everybody on the yard. So we used to get all the boys on the yard. There were about 12 in a circle around me. And I'd take them on the pads. And we would make them do circuits. And teach them weights. And believe me. Uh, some of them in there could have been world champions. Oh, absolute class. I mean, some of the Muslim boys. Oh, there was one of them. God, his night ups. Oh, beautiful class. It, you know, and when he, uh, he, he would make Tyson look like a walk around the park. And so we always train. And then on the other hand, I used to have, because they were with me, I used, to, I used to put the guys that couldn't fight or the guys that would get bullied, I always had them in the corner. And what would happen, they'd all be with me. But then I'd start taking them and boxing as well and introduce them to the rough guys. So it was good because I was teaching the guys who were fearful not to be fearful and the guys who were naughty to respect the, the, the weak guy. And so it was good. Uh, everyone had a good rapport and we was all training. And then everyone came together. It, oh, it was class. And, um, you know, I, I used to love it when a guy would come in, no friends, don't know no one, little nerdy. And he'd come on the pads and join these guys and in the gym. And, oh, mate, and he would always turn out good, you know. Some, some really, really good guys. And, um, but you get some officers who don't like it because... They think you're having a good time, and they think, oh yeah, it, 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 it shouldn't be done. But what they don't realise is, I'm taking out those boys' stress, anger. I'm taking away the violence that they would use against the officers. So you don't need to hate what I'm doing, because I'm not instigating them to hate the officers or to hate the prison system, you know? Uh, and I always remember, um, you know, uh, I, I, I love fighting, you know, and, and when I used to fight, I used to have a gym called Middle Row. 
and middle row, it was uh, the old coach left side. Uh, well, another coach took over first, and I, uh, I uh, took over from him. And um, I never forget. Uh, it was really funny in there. Um, I told you the story about Audley Harrison when um, he, 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 I was uh, teaching a guy sparring, and Audley wasn't. Uh, uh, a champion, I think he was still an amateur at that time, still good, and I love Audley Harrison, I respect all his achievements that he's done, and Audley said to me, oh, I'm a shit coach, and so I said to Audley, okay, no problem, crap, let's get in the ring, and he said, no, 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 you're doing me wrong, so I said, okay, no problem, let's go outside, and he went, no, 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 you're doing me outside, so in the end, I went mad, you know, I'm alone, you know, like, you know, our gym was, our gym was family, we all came together, jailed to get black and white at night. We, oh, it was, it was brilliant. Brendan Kelly, Ronnie Burns, it was absolutely Barney McCoy. It was class. It, 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 it was the guy from EastEnders. I forgot his name. So yeah, we was there. It was class, and we had a great big speaker, pumping house, pumping house. And what I'd done because all he made me so mad. It was on the first floor, of my gym. So I've now jumped out the, the, the window to jump through his golf convertible at the time, which he had at the time. And Crash, how's your father? Yeah. <laughs> like, the boys drag fish. No, 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 fish, forget it. Pull me in, pull me in the window. So Crash, the next day... Oh, I died down the The next day... They've all turned up with hammers and axes and a whole lot, yeah. And I was saying, boys, boys, it's not that kind of pie. But that's how close and united we were. Now, boxing for me, I mean, boxing for me a lot, especially in today's world. I, I love all boxers and I love everyone that takes it up. And I think everybody that steps into the ring is a champion. I don't care whether you win, lose, even if you've got the balls to do it. To me, you're a champion. That's it. But one thing I do notice now with boxing, they don't, boxers don't see, especially the younger boxers, they don't seem to train the same way we train. Do you know what I mean? Like, me, I would get up at five before work, go training, do circuits, and then I would run from Shepherd Bush up to Oxford Street, this time I was labouring and scaffolding. I'd work all day, run from Oxford Street to Labrick Grove to the gym, and then train, spar, weights, skip, circuit, and then run home. That was what I call fire. Yeah, and I loved fighting. I I adored it. And it was funny because I actually changed the whole rules of the ABA, which is the Amateur Boxing Association. Because what happened when we was in what we have, the divs, the London divs, and it's the ABA, and then you go to the final. And I was in the North West divs. And I, I, it's in those days, sometimes you had to have three fights. And uh, Richard Edwards, uh, he committed suicide, so God bless you, uh, from uh, St. Patrick's in Norfolk, gangster. Uh, you know, so I had to fight this first guy who was a Jamaican champion. He had all the tassels, boots were all tassels, everything was, you know, he had the vest, it was all shiny. But the thing with me was, and you know, when I boxed, I never ever watched anyone else boxing, I, you know, before a fight, N no way. Because then you might see something, think you want to do that. And so I would always lay under a carpet, I wouldn't talk to no one, I didn't hear no one. I, 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 I was just alone. And then, when I entered the ring, I walked in the ring, but I'd never look at the other boxer in his eyes. I'd always look down, I'd just look at my coach, I'd be quiet, and then I'd go over, I'd always shake his hand, but I still wouldn't look in his eyes. The first time that man saw my eyes is when that bell rang, and I was on. And me, I fought every single three minutes for three months. Bam, 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 There was, listen, machine, like Nigel Ben, that was machine. Yeah, there's, there was no rest, none of this 
bang, bang, this, bang, 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 I would stay on you. And so when I went out to this Jamaican champion, I thought, okay, here we go, this guy's good. So I stayed on him, didn't give him a chance, him, and just bam, 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 bam. I was, I wouldn't give him a chance, to, you know. I closed him down so he couldn't use his arms, and just oh, I, I stopped him in the second round. And so I went back in the changing room, you know, great, wonderful. And then my boys come say, oh, you got a, a ginger guy from St Pancras, and they said he was good. And I went, and I've got to be honest with you. You know what ginger people are like. <laughs> they can have the war. <laughs> the war. <laughs> and so Crash. Ah, oh, me and this guy. What a, what a battle. Ah, oh, beautiful. Absolute class, yeah. At war. Crash, 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 crash. Crack, toe to toe. Bop, boss, 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 boss. They're non-stop. Crack, crack, crack. Ah, oh, on it. Yeah, both of a proper war. And so he was my second fight. So the first fight I had, he had no fights. The ginger guy now, he's the second one. He had had no fights. Then I had to fight Richard Edwards, who committed suicide. And fair play. I dedicate this one to you. And me and Richard, the crack, crack, and I had him. Bang, 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 crack, crack, crack. Closed him down. Boss, boss. And he's gone. But all boxers out there, listen, listen to me carefully. Because he's gone now, I've dropped my hands ready to throw a right hand. But you always got to remember when you're fighting, whether on the street or in the ring. When a person is gone, that is when they're at their most dangerous. That is when they can pull it out the bag. And so, as I pulled it to took back, he's gone crash and caught my eye here. And I've gone down, got up. But the eye, when we call it a mouse, because when you blow your nose, all the eye in the air, the, everything blows your eye up, so we call it a mouse. And I wanted to continue, but the referee wouldn't let me continue, and I was absolutely gutted, because I've won the divs, and uh, that, that Northwest divs, but hey, you know. But the ABA then decided that because of that, and I had a, you know, I was fighting, everyone knew it every time, every fight, they decided that you could only have two fights a night now, and then the third one you have to have another fight, and I've got the letter, so I changed the whole rules of the ABA, you know, and then, then I had another fight, and it was against a black guy down in Watford, and this geezer's walking around, and he's eating rice and peas, drinking a gun, uh, drinking a bottle of, uh, uh, Grosh or whatever, or, uh, yeah, super mall, sorry, Pugan by Soma. And Crash has your file, I'm just laying there under the towel. And he comes up to me and says, Are you fish? I said, Yeah. He said, Right, well, I'm fighting you tonight, but don't worry, I'm going to knock you out. Okay, nothing. So I've gone back under the towel, walked in. To the ring, the fight's on now. I get ready, I walk into the ring, I get in the ring. I told you as I thought, I don't look at no one. I touched his gloves, went back to my corner, and then once that bell went, crash, crack, 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 mate, on it, on it, okay. So, I, what is crap? Listen, I ruined him, and he said to me, I, I won on points. And as we got back to China, he goes, ah, you, you, I won't say what he said. You saw me eat my food, you see me, and you kept whacking me up the stomach, yeah? He goes, yeah, I want a rematch. So I said, okay, cool. A rematch? We'll do a rematch, okay? So the rematch was done in the rifle rooms up in um, Edmund, not Enfield. The rifle rooms in Enfield. Now, see boxing for me. Boxing is a sport. It's fun. It's a game. Street fighting but are two different things. It, it, two absolute, totally different. Listen, when you're in that street, uh, you know, you can get stabbed, shot, hurt, five geezers. Listen, it's on. You, you've got a, an electricity about you, a, a feeling about you, like you, you, you're fast, you're swift, you're sharp. You're, oh, it's a different bars, you know, because you know 
You know, if you're a true street fighter, if you're a true fighter, if you're even a villain or gang, you know you're true. You know you can get hurt. And so because you know you can get hurt, you it just it's a doubt. I can't explain it. It's just a buzz. It, you know, it's a fear of getting hurt. There's no buzz like it. It's, oh, even now, ooh, it's just class. And so anyway, I got into this ring, and he's there, and so we're having the rematch. Now, as I said to you, boxing's always fun. The only time I ever took it serious was on this occasion like now. And I'll have to tell you why. So I'm going to, I mean, we, the bell's gone, we start fighting. But every time I'm hitting him, and every time he's hit me, all I can hear in the crowd is, beat up a boy! Beat up a boy! So I just got crash. Knocked him out. Because the street is two different things. So he got up, and again, crash! Got down. Got up, crash, got the ref stopped it. And then he shook my hand. But that was because I turned into street mode in the ring. Do you know what I mean? Uh, other than that, even though I used to fight 30 minutes and crack it, it was always just fine. It was having a lot of it. I didn't, it wasn't serious. But when I did see it, I knocked some spark out. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that is, street fighting's a totally different game. Yeah? And so, after that, he shook my hand and we became good pals. But it just shows you um, you know, uh, what can happen, and, and boxing's a funny thing, our gym was really good, and, um, we used to have a coach, and he always used to say, uh, you know, we used to go, yeah, I could take you, and I could deal with you, <laughs> and he'd always say, I'm six foot four, 21 stone, and more importantly, I'm black, you can't fuck with me, <laughs> What a coach. Absolute blinder. And, um, yeah. i never forget uh, one day he was showing. Because our gym, we were all together, all from the manor. We, we loved each other. We, we were together. Mate, we died for each other and loved each other. And we was all about sticking together. But whenever the coach used to show someone around, we had, if, if, if he was on a black geezer around, he'd be showing a black guy who hadn't been to the gym before but wanted to join and uh, Crash Hour's your father as he would go through one of the white guys he'd go to the black geezer don't all serious face don't talk to him he's National Front which is a racist organisation in this country and the black guy went what? what really? <laughs> and we were all pissing ourselves laughing and the black geezer left and didn't come back again <laughs> You know, that was the kind of gym we were. We 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 didn't give a shit, you know. Um and, and fighting we loved it. And the thing was, you know, people now I know with a lot of gyms now, people forget to skip. Skipping's important because skipping's usually for your feet, hand and eye coordination. Very important, but people don't do it. And not just skipping on the spot. You gotta skip all round, like so that your body gets used to moving your body weight as you're throwing punches and using your footwork. So that's what it's about. And the bag. You have to treat the bag as if you're fighting your opponent. What's the point of hitting the bag if you're not gonna hit it as if you're hitting your opponent? And so you have to be shut, bam, on the bag. Bam, bam, bam. You've got to have that same electricity. Put your punches there. Bang, put it on the bag. Put it on them. Crack crash. Yeah, use the bag, and go around the bag, use footwork, hit the bag once, move there, hit the bag once, move there. Don't just stand there, you know, and train. Do your training. People don't do circuits anymore. They don't, then they do it, but they, the kids especially, they don't put the effort in. And then when they don't put the effort in, and they lose, they cry. I used to really hate that, especially with some of my travellers. Oh, they were beautiful, my travellers. The travellers, I loved training them. But because they wouldn't put the effort in, they would cry. But if they put the work in, some of them are champions, you know. Oh, some of them travellers, trust me, they're on it. And that's why I love Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's on it, you know. And I remember uh, another time, um, I'll never forget the old coach who 
we used to go down to the scrubs every Sunday and train at the track. So we'd do our running and all that, and the coach would make sure we were fit. And the coach had an old, like, uh, Ford van, but it didn't, it wasn't a minibus, it was just a van. So all the boxers had to climb into the back, all with their bags and their gear to go to the right city, and he would take us in the van. And I never forget, he, um, I never forget, there was a little road rage incident. <laughs> and these guys are bad mouthing the coach. And so the coach said, wait there. And he got out and there was four people in his car. And they were all lumps. And the coach said, wait there. And he got out the car. And he opened the van. <laughs> and that jumps 15 boxes off. <laughs> Of that old lot of lumps, and this car just sped away. <laughs> oh, that's a loop mayhem, you know, and and that's why I used to love boxing. I used to love fighting, uh, like like, uh, and I only took up boxing because all my boys said to me, Chris, take up what you keep getting it fighting. You're going to get a big bird, and, and I never started boxing until I was 26. You know, because I was always fighting on the street anyway, and at wars and that, on doors. And so Crash, um, you know, I took up boxing just to stop getting in. But I loved it and, and trained hard. And, and also it teaches you discipline. And that's why you kids today, you really do need to get fit. You need to be able to have the war. Yeah? You, listen, I've been stabbed twice. This knife, but, and I've carried a knife, and I've carried guns, but... It's, it's, that's not what it's about. You need to be able to defend yourself without that because I can do the bird and I've done the bird, but can you? Yeah? And not just that. But with the knives, you're hurting people's families, the community. You know, it, it, it's a gun. You know? And so you've got to get fit. So you need to go to the gym to do that. You know? And you need to not just get big and get, go to the gym and get big. Hench. Oh, yeah, I'm hench. Size might scare people, it doesn't scare me. And the smallest are always the worst. And so Crash, when, when you go to that gym, train hard now. Because you've got to give your body a chance of getting to that hospital when, it's get, when you get stabbed. Do you know? And I was talking to a few guys the other day outside the group, And we were talking about this stabbing issue. And that's why I love talking to the young. You know, when I talk about stabbing, what angers me the most? Everyone says, oh, talk to the youth, talk to the children, talk to this, talk to that. But who actually listens to them? Do you know what? Forget us talking to them. They're dealing with it. They're going through it. Let them talk to us. And then we talk to them. And that's another big problem. I think mean, everyone's so busy talking to them. No one's listening to them. We've got to listen to them, not them listen to us. You understand? And so, crash, um, you know, boxing is a way forward, you know, and boxing brings communities together. Boxing brings people together. And this is why, you know, this postcode wars and all that, you know, in a gym, it, 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 when you all come camaraderie and join friends, all this, all that goes away. But now I've noticed with the postcode wars, oh, I can't go to your gym because I've got trouble there. Oh, I can't go to there because I've got to... It's crazy, you know? And yet boxing, you know, can save your life. You know, boxing is, uh, oh, it's great. It's discipline and it's an aura. It's, it's a buzz. It's a dream, you know? And it helps you in situations where normally you might get hurt or you might get done. Because like, you're fit and you can run. Because sometimes you have to run. And running sometimes is fine. Right, as you all know, my camera only does 30 minutes. So, here we go. Enjoy the show. Easy on the mic and mind how you go. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to keep the show alive. Gangster. Ha! <laughs> Bingo.